So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, this is Robin Norgren, and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. We feature many different themes um, that uh, come around creativity, Montessori, and the way in which you live your life and the meaning that you take from it. Right now, we're in a series called Five Poems, and it is a way of jump-starting um, maybe a desire you might have to um, delve into more poetry, or maybe it's just something you've never really had a lot of access to. Um, that's where I find myself. And just a real desire to um, just see how the gift of, of words come together in these very magical ways. So with this series, I offer you five poems from five different poets as an introduction to these poets and for you to um, maybe find a new poet or a poet you've never heard of before and then go out and support their work. So I really hope you enjoy it. Starting with poem number one, White Towels by Richard Jones. I have been studying the difference between solitude and loneliness, telling the story of my life to the clean white towels taken warm from the dryer. I carry them through the house as though they were my children asleep in my arms. Little Father by Lee Young Yi. Lee Young Lee. I buried my father in the sky. Since then, the birds clean and comb him every morning and pull the blanket up to his chin every night. I buried my father underground. Since then, my ladders only climb down. And all the earth has become a house whose homes are the hours, whose doors stand open at evening, receiving guest after guest. Sometimes I see past them to the table spread for a wedding feast. I buried my father in my heart. Now he grows in me, my strange son my little root who won't drink milk, little pale foot sunk in unheard of night, little cloud spring newly wet, in the fire little grape, parent to the future, parent to the future wine, a son the fruit of his own son, little father I ransom with my life. Alzheimer's by Bob Hycock. Chairs move by themselves and books. Grandchildren visit, stand new and nameless. Their faces puzzles, missing pieces. She's like a fish in deep water, its body made of light. She floats through rooms, through my eyes, an old woman bereft of chronicle, the parable of her life. And though she's almost a child, there's still blood between us. I passed through her to arrive, 
So I protect her from knives, chairs, from the street that calls as rivers do, a summons to walk away, to follow, and dress her, demonstrate how buttons work. When she sometimes looks up and says my name, the sound arriving like the trill of a bird so rare, it's rumored to no longer exist. Rain by Naomi Shihab Nye. A teacher asked Paul that he would remember from third grade, and he sat a long time before writing, This year somebody touched me on the shoulder and turned his paper in. Later she showed it to me as an example of her wasted life. The words he wrote were large as houses in a landscape. He wanted to go inside them and live. He could fill in the windows of O's and D and be safe while outside birds building nests in drain pipes knew nothing of the coming rain. A Myopic Child by Giannis Rittos The other kids romped around the playground. Their voices rose up to the roofs of the quarter. Also the splunk of their ball like a globular world, all joy and impertinence. But he was reading the whole time there in the spring window within a rectangle of bitter silence until he finally fell asleep on the windowsill in the afternoon, oblivious to the voices of those his own age and to premature fears of his own superiority. The glasses on his nose looked like a little bike left leaning against a tree off in a far-flung, light-flooded countryside. A bike of some child who had died. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please make sure to share this with someone that you think would really enjoy this type of series. You can find my work over at www.robinnorgren.com.